Now we can technically start the show because we are recording so that I can post this onto YouTube a little later. Uh, welcome everybody, good morning, good afternoon. It's uh, Thursday, April 22nd. It is time for our FOC Roundup Show. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, FOC stands for Final Order Cutoff. It's kind of a last call to add comic books to your subscription before it's too late as all of the moms and grandmas and fathers found out yesterday with Batman Fortnite. Um, so don't don't fall prey to Batman Fortnite. You know, get, get your orders in as soon as you possibly can. Uh, we, we try to do all the legwork for you. We try to type this, uh, this little document up that you see behind me. This is on our website. So if you go to www.halloofjusticecomics.com and click on the blog, you will land right here on this page. This is the FOC Roundup page for April 22nd. You can see up there in the very top left corner, we've got, we, we do this every week. I type this up Wednesday night after I get home. Um, so it's live on the website Wednesday night after uh, after we close this, the shop. Uh, you have all day Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday, and then a little bit of Sunday morning to get your orders in for DC. Uh, and then everybody else, Marvel, IDW, Dynamite, come over here, see, that's my kid, there's Oliver, say hi Oliver. Hi. <laughs> you have all day uh, Sunday to get your orders in for all of the other publishers. DC is due Sunday, everybody else is due Monday. Uh, we're talking April 25th by 11 a.m. Mountain Time and April 26th by 11 a.m. Mountain Time. And the way this works, if you see anything that you like in this post, in this video, if you're watching this on YouTube a little later on, all you have to do is to comment sub and we will add these titles to your subscription here at the store with us. That way you don't miss out on anything. Uh, if you don't want to, if you're afraid of commitment and you don't want to set it up on a subscription, that's cool too. We have an option for that. All you have to do is to comment pull with the title of the book, the cover that you would like, and the quantity that you would like to order. The sky's the limit. As long as you get your orders in by final order cutoff before the deadline, you know, you can order 50 copies of the variant cover for, for Bounty Hunters number 12 or 10 copies of... Uh, the super cool uh, Jason Fabok variant for Batman Black and White number six, but we've got to have your orders in before the cutoff. If it's after the cutoff, my 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 numbers are finalized when those uh, orders are due, and you're at the mercy of coming into the store when the books come out and grabbing a copy off of the rack if you don't have it set up before FOC. So. Uh, sub and pull are the two words that we like to, to kick around when we're doing this this year's show. Uh, the last thing that I want to bring attention to, there's a line right there, kind of middle of the screen that says covers in bold, did not have images at the time of this write-up. So I do this a little early. Technically, the, the publishers have to have all of their uh, covers and images into Diamond by Friday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So we're jumping the gun a little bit, but I try to do that again so that you guys have access to the information as quickly as possible so that you have time to review it uh, to make your, your comic ordering decisions. So yay, comics! All right, let's get in. Let's get into it this week. We've got from Dark Horse, Far Cry Rite of Passage number one. It's a three-issue miniseries. President Anton Castillo's only son, Diego, has just turned 13, but this birthday is more than a celebration, it's a rite of passage. By telling his son about Vas Montenegro's inner, struggle, inner struggles, Anton wishes to teach Diego the importance of harnessing the power of chaos. Cover right there on your screen by Matt Taylor, $3.99, three-issue miniseries. If you like the video game... There are no redeemable codes in here, so you don't have to worry about lining up when uh, New Comic Book Day hits on Wednesday. Next from Dark Horse, we have a series, brand new series called Rangers of the Divide, number one of four. Following the disappearance of the nation's peacekeepers, an elite commander stumbles upon a team of bright-eyed cadets in need of leadership. The group prepares to venture out on their first mission into uncharted territories. Are they ready to face what awaits them, or will danger find them first? This is the debut comic series written and illustrated by comic artist Megan Huang. Dragons, mythical beasts, and sci-fi technology. Who doesn't love those three things? $3.99, four-issue miniseries, only one cover for Rangers of the Divide. Okay? We were talking about this just a second ago. Here we go. Batman Black and White, number six of six. The final issue of the acclaimed revival of Batman Black and White is here, and readers don't want to miss this deep dive into the new horrors of Gotham and 
and Ordinary Citizens Inspired by Batman. Iconic Batman scribe Scott Snyder reunites with his all-star Batman collaborator, Mr. John Romita Jr., to tell the story of a man who has been documenting, documenting Batman's history in Gotham for a very long time, and now he has something to say about the Dark Knight's legacy. Eisner Award nominee and the artist behind Batman Universe and Future State Next Batman, Nick Darrington, writes and draws an epic tale introducing us to two gangs whose power struggle in Gotham has been going on longer than the history of the city itself. The acclaimed creative team between behind Infinite Loop, Elsa Char Charedier and Pierrick, I don't know how to say those names, team up once more for their DC Comics writing debut with a frightening story of psychological horror and the Dark Knight. And the fan-favorite creators of Rumble, Jar John Arcudi and James Heron spin a tale of Clayface and the evils lurking beneath the surface of the stories we love the most. Uh, lastly, Brandon Thomas and artist Kerry Randolph tell a story about one of Gotham's most impoverished neighborhoods and how it ends up being exploited by villains like the Mad Hatter. Three cover options for Batman Black and White number six, which of course, as you can tell, is an anthology series. The main cover on the far left is, uh, is very liney, and it is by John Romita Jr. Uh, the variant cover right here by, beside me is by Jason Fabok. And last but not least, we have cover C by Yasmin Putri with a very creepy Mad Hatter and Batman pulling, pulling the Batman out of his hat instead of a rabbit. So, pretty cool. Uh, this, I can't wait till you, to, till you guys see the C cover for this one because if you like the Phantasm, it is amazing. Uh, Batman Catwoman number 5 of 12, Batman's two loves collide, and the smash-up could be dangerous, not just for the caped crusader, but for the Joker as well. Uh, in order to prove her mission is righteous, Phantasm takes Catwoman out on a hit against one of the men responsible for the disappearance of her son. Unfortunately for Selina Kyle, this isn't the first time she's gone behind Batman's back to try to do the right thing, so she's far too aware of how bad a turn this whole affair could take. Also, in the future, it's Harley Quinn ready to avenge Mr. J. So cover A on the far left over there is by Clay Man. Cover B right here beside me is by Jim Lee. Cover C, though, look at that. That is freaking awesome by Travis Charest. The fact that he's got Batman and Catwoman's face in the reflection of his sickle hand is, is pretty awesome. Or her sickle hand. It's kind of neat. So that's Batman Catwoman number five. Next, from DC, we've got Catwoman number 31 with a couple of awesome covers. Catwoman and Shoes have crashed Mr. Roy's home art gallery opening, but they aren't there to nick a Klimt or a Monet. No, they're after the newest addition to Mr. Roy's esteemed collection, a large test tube containing poison ivy. But ha how did Pamela get in this predicament in the first place? What was done to her, and why does she seem different? Main cover on the far left is by Robson Roca. The variant cover beside me here, uh, amazing, by Jenny Frizen, Catwoman number 31. All right, this is one of those uh, unique original graphic novels that DC likes to put out. This is I Am Not Starfire, the original trade paperback. Uh, from New York Times bestselling author Mariko Tamaki comes a story about Mandy with artist Yoshi Yoshitani. Uh, the daughter of a super famous superhero, Starfire. 17-year-old Mandy, daughter of Starfire, is not like her mother. Starfire is gorgeous, tall, sparkly, and a hero. Mandy is not a sparkly superhero. Mandy has no powers. She's a kid who dyes her hair black and hates everyone but her best friend, Lincoln. To Starfire, who is from another planet, Mandy seems like an alien, like some distant, angry, light-years-away moon. And ever since she walked out on her SATs, which her mom doesn't know about, Mandy has been more, ever more distant. Everyone thinks Mandy needs to go to college and become whoever you become at college, but Mandy has other plans. Or she did until she gets partnered with Claire, the person she intensely denies liking, but definitely likes a lot for a school project. When someone from Starfire's past arrives, Mandy must make a choice, give up before the battle has even begun, or step into the unknown and risk everything to save her mom. I Am Not Starfire is a story about teenagers and, as aliens, about knowing where you come from and where you're going, and about mothers. So, there you go. <coughs> 208 pages, $16.99, I Am Not Starfire. Okay? I'm pretty jazzed about this next one. Uh, this was one of my favorites when I was a kid reading comic books because it was a, it was an anthology series and it had little snippets 
about different eras in Batman's history and stories that uh, that you know came to fruition through this series. The the Legends of the Dark Knight is returning with a new number one. The iconic series is back. Comics icons and rising stars alike will tell digital first stories across the Batman mythos, beginning with comics legend and co-creator of the boys, Mr. Derek Robertson, writing and drawing an epic three-issue supervillain crime drama. A new player has arrived on the scene in Gotham City and is selling deadly chemicals to the worst villains in town, Mr. Freeze, the Penguin, and even the Joker. It's up to Batman to stop the villains, track down the supplier, and save Gotham once more. And in upcoming issues, look stories and art by Stephanie Phillips, Brandon Thomas, Becky Cloonan, Matt Rosenberg, Brandon Easton, Cian Tormi, Giannis Milo Giannis, Carl Mostert, and many, many more. Uh, main cover on the far left is by Derek Robertson, and a variant cover right here by me is by David Marquez. So that should prove to be a whole boatload of fun. <clears throat> Finally, from DC this week, we've got Wonder Girl number one. The story of Yara Floor starts here, the Amazonian from the Amazon. Raised in the far-off land of Boise, Idaho, Yara Floor has always felt something was missing from her life, and now she's headed to Brazil to find it. Little does she know, her arrival will set up a series of events that will change the world of Wonder Woman forever. Her return has been prophesized, and with that prophecy comes the undivided attention of benevolent gods from pantheons beyond. Danger lurks around every corner, but this is this young hero ready for her journey? Find out in a debut issue you absolutely cannot miss. Spinning out of the best-selling Future State Wonder Woman, acclaimed writer-artist Joelle Jones makes a triumphant return to the character to officially introduce her into the DC Universe. You think you know Wonder Girl, but you have never seen her like this. The main cover on the far left was our uh, header for our post on Facebook, and that is by Joelle Jones. Uh, the variant cover right here beside me is by, I don't know how to say her name, Beliks Evely? I apologize. And uh, last but not least, there is a very cool kind of blue leathery blank cover that will be available for Wonder Girl number one. Okay? From IDW this week, continuing their best of series focused on the Turtles, we've got TMNT Best of Splinter number one, just a one shot. The best of series continues with everyone's favorite sensei, Splinter. Wise and with a tragic past, Splinter forms the core of the Turtle family, taking stories from multiple publishers. Uh, this is the book to read for Splinter's greatest tales. $5.99 for this one shot, and look at that cool hot pink cover by Biggie. Uh, from Marvel this week comes Fantastic Four Life Story number one of six. In the tradition of Spider-Man Life Story and in celebration of the FF's 60th anniversary comes this series setting the lives of the fabulous foursome in real time across the years. And in the backdrop of the Cold War and the space race, a terrible accident gives the Fantastic Four great powers, a terrible secret, and entangles them in the history of their planet. Uh, if you haven't, if you if you aren't familiar with Spider-Man Life Story, every issue occurs in a different decade. So, for example, Fantastic Four number one is going to be in the '60s, two is going to be '70s, three is going to be '80s, four '90s, five '2000s, uh, and then six in the '2010s to present. So it's pretty cool. They do a really good job with these things. Uh, the main cover on the far left over there is by Daniel Acuna. The variant cover right here beside me is by Mr. Brett Booth. And then we have one that's very cool down here by Marcos Martin. So three options, Fantastic Four Life Story numero uno. Next from Marvel comes Heroes Reborn number three of seven, but technically it's eight because you've got Heroes Return at the very end of this. Chaos Magic at Mach 5. Blur, the swiftest mortal alive, must win a race through the mind-bending dread dimension in order to save his soul from the hypersonic hexes of the Speedster Supreme, the Silver Witch. Plus, a backup tale takes us inside the dark secrets of the Ravencroft Asylum and its newest inmate, the Phoenix. Main cover on the far left is by Lionel Francis Yu. Variant, we have the Mark Bagley trading card variant right here beside me. Uh, you've also got the Christopher action figure variant on the far left there, and then Peach Momoko uh, with a with a very cool Ghost Rider Stormbreakers cover for Heroes Reborn number three. Okay, 
Uh, also tying into Heroes Reborn, we've got this one shot called Magneto and the Mutant Force number one. Can Magneto resurrect hope, resurrect hope for mutant kind before it's too late? Years ago, Magneto and Professor X led Earth's mutants in a final push for independence against the Squadron Supreme of America. What followed was the Squadron's Mutant Massacre, a violent rebuttal that left mutant kind forever wounded and Xavier dead, or so Magneto thought. Years later, Magneto discovers Xavier clinging to life in the astral plane and gathers his allies for a first-of-its-kind rescue mission. Too bad the same mission puts the mutant force back on the squadron's radar. Failure means the last gasp of mutant kind, but success means the first breaths of something even more elusive to the mutant heroes, mutants of heroes reborn. Hope. Main cover on the far left is by Nick Bradshaw. Variant cover right here by me is by Ryan Benjamin. And then there is also a spoiler variant <gasps> by Bernard Chang. But that's what we have for the cover. So three options, just a one shot, five ninety nine, Heroes Reborn, Magneto and the Mutant Force, number one. Next from Marvel, we've got another one shot. This is Immortal Hulk, Time of Monsters, number one. Al Ewing and Alex Pacnadel introduce the original Hulk. 10,000 years ago, something green and glowing comes to poison the ancient ground of Fertile Crescent and the hearts of its people. One boy is left to bear the consequences and for the first time to open the green door. That's interesting. Plus, Bruce Banner faces a challenge unlike any he's seen before as writer David Vaughn makes his Marvel debut. Main cover on the far left is by Juan Ferreria. And the variant cover right here beside me is by Mr. Ron Lim, Immortal Hulk, Time of Monsters, number one. If you're subscribed to Immortal Hulk, we'll have that on your, on your hold slot for you so you don't have to worry about it, okay? Next from Marvel, we have uh, the trailer just dropped earlier this week. I, haven't, I still haven't had a chance to take a look at it yet, but I hear it's pretty fantastic. Uh, Shang-Chi, who's had a couple of one-shots and a miniseries, is now getting his own ongoing title with this issue, the debut number one. Shang-Chi versus the Marvel Universe. Shang-Chi and his family are back, and this, this time they're colliding head-to-head -head with the Marvel Universe's biggest heroes. Shang-Chi has finally taken his place as the leader of the Five Weapons Society, but using an evil secret organization as a force for good won't be easy. And it's about to get a lot harder when Shang-Chi's fellow superheroes, like the Amazing Spider-Man, start to see him as the bad guy. Jean Loon Yang and Dyke Ruan return to bring you the next chapter of this Marvel legend. Main cover on the far left is by Lionel Yu. Variant cover beside me here is by Michael Cho. Then we've got on the far left a cover by Jung Gen Yoon. And finally a super log cover, all of which are open to order. Shang-Chi, number one, the start of a new ongoing series. Okay? All right. Next from Marvel, we've got uh, the Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 12, which continues the prelude to War of the Bounty Hunters that technically started in last week's issue of Star Wars number 13. So, again, if you are all in uh, on Star Wars, you don't have to worry because this is already set up for you. But if you if you changed your mind, if you were just on the War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha and the miniseries, and you want to go all in, please let us know because these are all starting to pass FOC uh, and you will be at the mercy of buying them off the rack uh, you know, when the books come out. So, The threat in the shadows as Bellarit Valance and his reluctant partner Dengar race to intercept Boba Fett and his precious cargo. Who are the deadly pursuers that are after them? A dark secret from Valance's past connection to Han Solo may get him killed all these years later. But who is the mysterious leader of an assassination squad that is driving Valance into a life and death confrontation with his old friend? The main cover on the far left is by Mattia de Ilus, the, who's also doing, they're, they're doing these crimson ones for each issue. I don't know why. It's the same cover. It's just all kind of red tone. Uh, and then last but not least, we have the Empire Strikes Back variant right there on the far left by Mr. Christopher Sprouse. So... Star Wars Bounty Hunters number 12 on FOC on Monday. And that's it for the bulk of the of the stuff. This brings us to what we call our subsequent print speculation section. We'll give you the little clip here brought to you by Mr. Oscar. Hey bro. Are you the second prince? Why yes, yes we do. And there's there's quite a few this week, to be honest with you. Uh, second prince, third prince, fourth prince, fifth prince, etc. 
uh, inherently always have a smaller print run than the firsts do, and as such, uh, sometimes can command a higher dollar amount on the secondary market. So, if you want to get in, get in on these, get in now. Order a copy before FOC, uh, and as long as long as they're not allocated like all the berserkers were, you, we should have one for you, hopefully. Uh, and that, that brings us to our first this week. We've got from Boom Studios, Berserker number two, second print. Number two doesn't even come out till next week, and apparently it's already sold out, and they're already announcing a second printing. So here you go, the Berserker number two, second print, which is a glorious cover by Mr. Dan Mora. It's fantastic. He's got a saber-toothed tiger because he is the man who cannot die. He's kind of like Vandal Savage slash Wolverine slash the old guard. Um... As far as I know, this one is not going to be foil, and it's not going to be allocated. So order it, and if it shows up, awesome. And if not, I apologize, because I don't know what the heck uh, is going on with Boom right now. So Berserker number two, second print, okay? From DC, here we go. Um, uh, I'm going to get on my my podium for a second. Uh, it doesn't matter, because the people who this is going to affect aren't watching this video anyway. Um, you know, people have been coming out of the woodwork for Batman, Fortnite, Zero Point, uh, and most of those people don't care anything about the comic. It's all about the redeemable code that's inside the bag that allows you little tchotchkes and skins and things like that for in-game play. Um, Batman, Fortnite, Zero Point, number two, doesn't come out until the first week of May. Uh, it is already sold out. I can't get any more. Uh, so if you're asking for it right now, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a second print copy. This is on FOC on Sunday. Batman Fortnite number two, second print. Number one has already gotten a second print. My orders are in. Uh, I'm not going to have enough of those either because I had no idea what the response was going to be to this. Uh, DC has announced that they're doing a third print of number one. And all of the subsequent prints will still have the digital codes inside the bag, so you don't have to worry about that. If you collect all six of the comic books and redeem all of the codes that are in the six books, it gives you a, a special exclusive Batman skin that I believe DC has copyright to that you can't buy in the Fortnite store in-game. So that's that's why people are going nuts for these, these comic books. So... Batman Fortnite zero point number two second print is on FOC Sunday. Uh, third print hasn't hit FOC yet. We'll make sure we let you know as soon as it is, okay? But if you want the third print of number one, ask away because we can put that on. It's already on our spreadsheet. We can add that for you uh, to make sure that you get a copy if you didn't get one that came out this week, okay? Joker number two is getting a second print, this time with a brand new cover by Mr. Francesco Mattina. Uh, and again, this is one that came out last week. It sold out immediately. It had the first appearance of, uh, I think her name is Vengeance, uh, Lady Bane, Bane's daughter. We don't really know. There's not a whole lot. She just shows up at the end of the book. But there she is right there on the cover for the second print Joker number two on FOC on Sunday. Okay. From Image this week, you'll notice up above Radiant Black right kind of there even with me on the far left geiger number one is getting a third print i i i i'm at a i'm at a loss for words because geiger it's it's jeff johns and gary frank and you know we ordered a ton of them and it's been selling like crazy and then for some reason it caught wind on the secondary market and all of the covers that we did on the stream sale on monday a couple of weeks ago are selling for 12 to 15 bucks for first print copies. The the glow in the dark one that came out this week is a $15 book. Um, Image solicited second prints for Geiger number one before number one had hit store shelves, and so my numbers for the second print are already in. I don't know when that comes out, but they're 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 on order. They're they're locked in. So Image is soliciting a third print of Geiger number one, which is just crazy. Uh, so if you would like that. Let us know before Monday. We can get you a copy added to your hold slot. Okay, uh, and this this is another one that keeps selling out. Every single issue that uh, Image is publishing is selling out, uh, going on to a subsequent printing. We've got Radiant Black number one with a third print cover by Geraldo Borges, uh, which is super cool, and it actually connects technically to the number two third print, which is also by Geraldo Borges. Bor I don't know how you say his last name. So. Uh, number one 
is getting a fourth print, right? Isn't that what I said? No, no. number one's the third print. Number two is getting a third print. Number three is getting a second print with a non-connecting cover by CN Torme. So uh, if you're in for, if you like Radiant Black, you can, if you haven't, if you missed out on all of those, you can get caught up with some subsequent prints right there. Third, third, second print, okay? For Marvel, this was on FOC last week. I don't know why it's on FOC again. Maybe it's because they didn't have the image ready, but it's just a recolored version of the regular cover. Uh, Silk number one second print with a, a recolored version of the Stonehouse main cover. So uh, if you ordered it last week, don't worry, we've got your orders in. If you didn't get it last week, let us know because it's on FOC again. And then for Marvel, uh, apparently there is still demand for High Republic, so High Republic number one is getting a fifth print right there, uh, kind of a black and white spot colored uh, main cover by Phil Noto. Number two is getting a fourth print, same thing, that's the main Noto cover, again spot colored. They look great together. Uh, number three is getting a third print, Phil Noto main cover, spot colored. So one, two, and three all getting subsequent printings for High Republic uh, from Marvel, okay? And that, kids, brings us our, I know, that's a very risque cover that we we're pausing on the screen for. But that brings us to our Who Does Number Two Work For segment. So, check it out. Who does number two work for? Who does number two work for? That's right, buddy. You show that turd who's boss. Show that turd. I'm the turd, show me who's boss, by ordering comics that you might have picked up on issue number one of, and you're like, eh, I don't know, I don't know if I want to commit to this. Well, here we go. The, so that's what this segment is about. The, the Who does number two work for is a segment where we spotlight issue number twos that are on FOC. Number one may have come out this week. Number one may have come out a couple of weeks ago. If you grabbed a copy off the rack, it's not on your subscription. If you read it and you enjoyed it, now is the time to let us know, because we always cut numbers for number two. Uh, we never order as high on issue twos as we do on issue number ones. It's just, you know, there there is always a drop off because people are buying number ones for speculation. They're buying number ones to try it out. Um, they don't always return to buy a copy of number two. So this is, this is why we do this little section. From Ablaze this week, Yamahama, Sumerian, Iron Shadows in the Moon, number two is on FOC. Conan and Olivia escape to a remote island. Who wouldn't want to go to a remote island with that young lady right there? Attempting to flee their oppressors. But as they take refuge inside an ancient temple, avoiding the dangers that lurk in the nearby jungle, they may have awakened an ancient evil that humankind has yet to comprehend. <laughs> as Conan likes to do. Will they find a way to escape before they are overcome by threats inside and out? That sounds just dirty, especially with that cover on the screen. Uh, cover A up there on the far left is by Lyrix Lee. Fantastic. Uh, cover B right here beside me is by somebody with the name of JB Style. I like that. Oh, JB Smooth. Uh, cover C, I'm going to have to scroll up because I don't remember the names after seeing that first one, is by Mateo Guerrero. Uh, it looks like he's fighting Manbat. And cover D is, as always, is by Fritz Cassis, and it's kind of the homage variant cover. Sumerian, The Iron Shadows in the Moon, number two. From Aftershock, uh, all of our main copies of this book came in damaged, like horribly, like they got dropped on the floor and then they still decided to get packed in a box. So the only copies of Phantom on the scan, number one that we have, were the one in 15 incentives. Uh, they have been confirmed that they are going to get replaced but we have not received those replacements yet. Hopefully they'll be here on next week's shipment. So uh, I can't really speak to what it's about. Uh, the artwork and the damaged copies looked amazing. It's written by Cullen Bunn. It's got interior art by Mark Torres. Uh, a group of frightened psychics gather to learn how and why their gifts are killing them. What is the mystery that binds them together? What is the source of their powers? And how is the clandestine Trelux Institute involved? As they pursue the answers to these questions, they discover that they are also being stalked by human killers. Killers with powers of their own. Uh, main cover right there on your screen is by Mark Torres, who again is the interior artist. So, um, we will get our Phantom on the scan number ones replaced at some point. Hopefully they will not be damaged as well. Uh, in the meantime, you know, let us know if you'd like a copy of number two. I know that doesn't do much good to anybody, but I... I 
I can't control how Diamond or UPS handles and packs our boxes. So uh, This one was on FOC a couple of weeks ago, but number one just dropped yesterday. Alice in Leatherland, number two from Black Mask. Alice will get a hearty taste of the San Francisco treat. That's not rice or oni, kids. Uh, along, and along the way, she'll learn a few new things. Just because her whole world falls apart doesn't mean she can't build something exciting from scratch, like two new passionate and, and unconventional friendships. And even if her sugary fairy tales haven't broken through her creative block, a job may be the best way to discover her complicated new city. And also, peanut butter can fix pretty much anything. I don't know what that's about, but if you are, uh, you know, if you're into the the LGBTQ and the kink world, you might want to check out Alice in Leatherland. Number one's on the rack right now. Number two is on FOC on Monday, and it is three ninety nine. Okay. From Dark Horse this week. Kojikaru the Skinner, which was originally solicited as a 12-issue miniseries. It's not. It's only two issues. Number two is on FOC today, or on Monday, I should say. Called forth from beyond the grave to fight witches once again, Kojikaru the Skinner wreaks her havoc on the witches of the Hexen Corpse. But with her evil buoyed by the violence of the Nazis and the supernatural presence of the Outer Dark, the ghostly warrior will have to depend on a ragtag group of white witches and resistance soldiers to back her up. It will prove to be a desperate fight indeed. The main cover right there is by Peter Bergting, Kojikaru the Skinner. It's only a two-issue miniseries, not of 12. Number one came out yesterday, two is on FOC on Monday. Okay? This is another book that just came out uh, uh, yesterday. IDW, we've got Godzilla Monsters and Protectors number two. Rise up, part two. The world knows that the king of the monsters has been riled up by the Linival energy plants whose output sent Godzilla on a pan-Pacific destructive spree the likes of which the world has never seen. But the danger is greater than anyone knows. Godzilla is sitting in judgment on humanity and the verdict could spell doom for life on Earth. The Shobajin become aware of this and now and know they could ask Mothra to intervene. But does humanity deserve Mothra's help? Reuniting the blockbuster creative team of writer Eric Burnham and artist Dan Schoening, uh, Rise Up continues here. Cover A on the far left is by Dan Schoening. Cover B is the photo cover featuring Mothra, Godzilla, Monsters, and Protectors. From Image this week, uh, we get home number two. This was out last week of five. Juan is on the run. Shaken from the trauma of being separated from his mother, the sudden emergence of superhuman abilities, and an accidental jailbreak, he has two options. Track down his aunt in Houston or learn to survive on his own. Cover A on the far left is by Lisa Sterl. Cover B beside me here is by Jacoby Salcedo. The story of, uh, of an immigrant who has superpowers and has to get separated from his mother and all kinds of other crazy stuff. So home number two of five. Next from Image this week, we've got Jules Verne's Lighthouse number two of five. This one also came out last week, I believe. When Vasquez runs out of her medication, her nanny bot Moses comes up with a new prescription. Now she has to contend with mood swings and side effects as well as a horde of murderous space pirates. This could turn out to be a very bad day. Cover A, B, and C are all by Mr. Brian Haberlin and Jared Van Dyke. So you can pick your poison as to which of those three covers best suits you. That must be the nanny bot. He's pretty cool looking. Lighthouse. Jules Verne's Lighthouse, number two of five. For Marvel this week, Mighty Valkyries, this one just came out yesterday, number two of five, is also on Final Order Cutoff. The mystery of the newest Valkyrie unfolds. The biggest new addition to the Marvel Universe finally fulfills a promise years in the making. On the planet of Perdita lives an ancient power imprisoned, leashed. Valkyrie goes to free it, and herself and she must work quickly, for back on Midgard, Jane Foster has fallen into the sights of Craven the Hunter. The killer stalks a beast from another plane, one whom Loki claims threatens the lives of every mortal. But there is more to this creature than meets the eye. Can the gaze of a Valkyrie reveal the secrets behind the wolf and his unearthly origin? Main cover on the far left is by interior artist Mattia de Ilus. Eulis, I don't know how you say his last name. The variant cover right here is by none other than Miss Peach Momoko. Mighty Valkyries, number two. Next, from Marvel, we've got Way of X, number two. This one also came out this week. I believe that we are sold out of the A cover. 
Uh, a villain revealed the dark force hiding within Krakoa begins to show its true form. The answers are hidden within the mindscape. Kurtz and others. One of the most dangerous mutants is reborn. With a main cover on the far left by Giuseppe Camincoli and a variant cover right here by the uh, amazing Mr. Christian Ward. I love his use of colors. Uh, Way of X number two is on FOC on Monday. Finally, from Titan, we've got Minky Woodcock, the girl who electrified Tesla number two, a stylish, glamorous, feminist take on the classic gumshoe. Private investigator Minky Woodcock becomes involved in an investigation of maverick genius and reclusive pigeon fancier Nikola Tesla and discovers a horrifying conspiracy involving corrupt politicians and Nazis. Three covers to choose from. Cover A on the far left is by Lenka Simakova. Cover B is the photo cosplay cover. Cover C, right there, that's a little risque, is by Cynthia Von Bueller, who is the writer and the interior artist of the series. So, Minky Woodcock, the girl who electrified Tesla, number two. All right, kids, that wraps the show. The last bit that we leave you with is our entire list of all of the books that are on FOC on Monday, broken down by publisher. Uh, and the way you can use this list to your advantage, I'll show you right now. Okay, so let's go find something. Uh, first, we've got DC. Let me get out of the full screen here. Uh, let's take a look, for example. What, what were we missing? We weren't missing much, though, this week, were we? Um, something that was cool. Something that... Um, let's see. What are we looking for? Let's Let's go to... Uh, okay, let's go, let's go to this one, for example. Uh, Walking Dead Deluxe number 15 had a Raposa connecting cover that's kind of flying under everybody's radar. Um, we didn't talk about it in the show. The first issue, which dropped, I think it was number 12 or 13 that came out Wednesday, had uh, one of these Raposa beginnings of this big connecting cover set for, I think it's five issues. So if you want to see what that looks like, all you have to do is copy this item code right here. Uh, we are going to open up a new web browser of your choice. In the search bar, we're going to paste that item code. The very first result uh, that comes up from whatever search engine you're using is the previewsworld.com listing for that exact item. We've got March 21, 0243, The Walking Dead Deluxe, number 15, Cover C, Reposa. So, if you click on that link, it takes you to... The previewsworld.com listing for that item. Previewsworld.com is the consumer facing side of Diamond Comics that you can look through everything that's on FOC. There you can see the Dave Raposa connecting cover for issue number uh, 15. It's pretty, pretty bad. That is somebody got their face blown off. Uh, but you can you can go back to the list and you can use that list at your leisure all weekend long to figure out what it is that you would like to take a look at. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that we might want to check. Uh, it's kind of a light week though. It's kind of a light week for, uh, for new comics. So that's really, that's really it. Easy peasy, right? Um, I know that the Berserk, we have the Berserker image up there, so you don't have to worry about that. But that's 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 how you can use this list to your advantage. Uh, you know, take the time, go through the steps, um, put your list together over the weekend, and then, you know, send us your list. The easiest way that you can get your information to us is to comment on the Facebook post. Uh, you can either comment on this video, or we also have a post that was live on Facebook before we even went live on this video. Uh, you can comment on that post with a list of everything that you'd like to either sub or pull. Uh, and then Chris and I will work, we'll tag team that. Sunday and Monday we'll get all those requests in before I have to sit down and do FOC on Monday and, and Sunday for, for everybody at DC. So that's how it works. Uh, we thank you guys for taking the time out to join us and watch this video. Uh, you can also you know make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Hall of Justice Comics Collectibles, uh, and make sure you ring the bell there to get notifications when we post new content. So. Uh, that's all I have for you on this episode of FOC Roundup Live with John. If you have questions, reach out to us. We're all about transparency. I would be glad to answer anything that you have. Uh, and in the meantime, be safe, be healthy, and be, be nice to one another. Take care, guys. I'm John. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. <laughs>